Welcome to the Aircraft IT webinar today presented by NAVTEC and the subject is the NAVTEC flight planning system. We have a short agenda today. I'm going to go through a company and product overview, a live demonstration of the flight planning system, and then there will be a question and answer session at the end. If you do have any questions and answers, please can you type them into the pod and we'll try and get through some of them towards the end. The mission statement of NAVTEC is we partner with our aviation customers to provide affordable, high quality and mission critical aeronautical products and services. The family tree of NAVTEC can be traced back to 1946 and through various acquisitions and mergers comes to the company today. In NAVTEC, we have approximately 300, sorry, 250 employees, about 400 commercial customers, uh, 2,000 general aviation, military and helicopter customers. Uh, NAVTEC is privately owned independent company. NAVTEC can offer a host of products, charts, both paper and electronic, electric, electronic flight bag products, Navigational data, 424 feed, FMS, flight planning, a selection of crew planning products, and aircraft performance. At NAVTEC, our main concerns are flight safety and quality, and we have uh, attained AS9100. The company is audited by external auditors as well as customers, and we also have internal audits to maintain our quality. Just a few of the customers that we support. Our head office is in Waterloo, Canada, where the majority of our development work is carried out. And we have offices in London, UK, and Stockholm, Sweden. And we have a partnership with a company in India that also helps with some of our products. Our sales teams are based in North America, Europe, Asia Pacific and the Middle East. Just a few highlights of the NAVTEC flight plan before we go into the demonstration. Uh, the system is browser based. We support uh, Internet Explorer 8 and Firefox 15. It can optimize flight plans between any city pair. We follow the route adhesions for um, Traffic Orientation Schemes and RAD. The system can have the MEL, CDL penalties automatically applied to flights. There's an alerting function to warn the dispatcher should there be a, a change of weather, no TAMs. The list screen is where the flights are displayed, so it gives awareness to the dispatcher of what flights are plan to be departing. The plan screen is where the hard work is done, the entries for the uh, actual flight plan computations. A lot of this can be pre-populated through the databases and automated to run at predetermined times. The route building screen is very easy to use. There's no keywords involved and the route can be uh, compiled by the dispatcher or op staff via waypoints, uh, direct legs, uh, lat long, and the output for the crew can be customized to meet almost any requirements. The completed flight plan can be filed to Eurocontrol to uh, test uh, system to check for the, uh, rate, uh, the IFPS validity, and we file to the air traffic centers around the world uh, from the addresses of the AIP and we also can do a, a rain validation where required. I won't read all of this, but uh, we attend certain government and industry sponsored events to keep up to date with the events going on that will affect the flight planning uh, for the future. We have meetings with customers to discuss developments, improvements to the system. We plan to release four new variations of the system during the year with improvements. And there is a, a beta program where customers can test the 
new releases before they uh, go live. NFP can be deployed in a number of ways. The first way is a hosted solution where via the internet and a desktop computer or laptop, you connect to the uh, servers in Canada. The advantages here is no hardware to purchase. Uh, we have redundancy built into our servers in Canada. And as long as you have a computer and internet access, it can be accessed anywhere. On the disadvantages side is the main one is the speed of the internet. You're governed by how fast the internet is from where you are. Option two is a single server in-house. The advantages here are you're not relying on the speed of the internet. It is just the speed of the computer. The disadvantages are it's hardware purchase. You do need a permanent internet connection. And the speed is dependent on your network. The third option is what we call a one by one. Whereas the, 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 the one server hosted both uh, two systems, a Windows system and a Linux system, in the one by one, we have two separate servers. One is a Windows server that looks after the graphics and the interface with the desktop. And the second server is a Linux server that looks after the flight plan computation. For larger companies, we recommend a two by two system where the two servers are paired up so that you have a, a primary and a backup. So should anything happen to the primary servers, the, the backup servers can be brought into action to carry on flight planning. In all the in-house systems, we do back up to the servers in Canada. So should there be a catastrophic failure at the server location, flight planning can still be continued via the hosted system. We shall now go over to the live demo. Once you are presented with a login page, the user has a unique login to identify him to the system. This login also controls what access he has, whether it's just to the flight planning front end part or whether it allows access to the background databases. The list screen is divided into three sections. We have a map, uh, an info panel where details of the flight, weather, NOTAMs, aircraft details are displayed, and the, the flight list. On the map screen, you have a Google style scroll bar that you can uh, zoom in, zoom out. You can move the map around to central it as required. You can search for different waypoints, airways along the uh, across the world. So if you're not sure where a certain airport is, you can type in the ICAO or IATA code and it will be displayed on the map. The map has a number of overlays. Uh, the first one is the terrain data. This is from the NASA satellite uh, survey from a couple of years ago. And by clicking on the map, you can uh, display the elevation for that particular point in both feet and meters. There is a grid overlay for the lat and long. And there are different projections, so if you're doing polar flights, you can plot the map over the pole. Weather on the wind side, uh, winds can be overlaid at uh, different flight levels. We have three sources of winds. We use the North American Weather Service, uh, UK Met, and a company called Telvent, where we get both GRIB1 and GRIB2 winds. And as you know, GRIB1 winds will cease to exist at the end of this year. The time of the weather chart on the flight level is displayed in the bottom right hand corner.
SIG weather. Again, the time of the chart is displayed in the bottom right hand corner. And if I want to see the next chart, I can uh, offset it and view the midnight chart. SIGMITs, as we receive them, are entered to the system and displayed on the map when selected. Airspace, uh, we can display airways. Um, as you zoom in, you can see the airway names, waypoints, just like looking at the chart. Waypoints, where you want to see NDBs on route waypoints can be displayed. Restricted areas. Uh, we have two types of restricted areas. The first one is the ones we receive on the 424 feed and are updated on the, the permanent ones uh, by our staff in Waterloo. The second one is a user defined area. This is where the customer can define the area himself, either a circle or a shape. Uh, this is used for uh, hurricane avoidance and things like that. Airports can be displayed and restricted by elevation and by runway length. So if I'm looking for airports with a runway of 7,000 feet, uh, it can be entered in meters if required. Uh, as you zoom in, you can see the airport names. And by right clicking on an airport, it brings in the IATA ICAO code, airport name, runway details, uh, elevation, the latest TAF and forecast and the details on the runways there. We can also display the FARs on the map. And for those that fly the tracks, North Atlantic, Pacific, Australian, Canadian tracks can all be displayed in either direction. And by clicking on the track, uh, the validity time, direction, waypoints are displayed. For ETOP flights, the um, ETOP circles can be populated automatically. The system has a airport database where the use of the airport could be defined either as a, an origin, a destination, ETOPS. So the flight, the system will calculate whether the flight needs to be ETOPS or can use the 60 minute circles. Uh, display the ETP route, uh, reclear alternate uh, escape routes. And the last is just a reset to save going through each field and having to unclick everything. The information panel, as you run through the flight plan, it brings in the weather NOTAMs, uh, company NOTAMs. These are particular internal NOTAMs uh, that will be related to the fleet, to a particular aircraft or particular route, and for the alternates for the flight. This can be expanded to uh, half page for easier reading, reading and if required can be printed off. One thing I forgot to mention on the map, the map can be expanded to full size if required and can be saved to be included into the uh, flight brief package. The flight list screen can be populated in a number of ways. Uh, from a crewing system where we receive the schedule, uh, aircraft registration, payload, 
from a SIM file where we can load it into the database, or there is a, a NAVTEC database where the schedule can be loaded. So the flights can be populated automatically. There is a filter to filter out different um, flights uh, and status of flights. So we have a window here of six hours back and 12 hours forward. I can look for flights that have been computed or not computed. These radio buttons serve two functions. And for automation, I can check which flights are in automation, which ones had a problem, and which one are in manual. So if we go into the plan screen, the airports are color coded based on cloud base and visibility that have been preset in the system. So for the demo system, we have a lower limit for Gatwick, so it's amber. And we have a, a green for Palmer, which means it's above limits. If it was below landing limits, it would be red. So the plan screen is populated automatically by the databases. So as we go through the screen, we couldn't fit everything on one screen that could be used in a flight plan. So we have pop out windows that have other options that are not used or are preset and un not used that often. So as we go through the flight info panel, if we click on the uh, arrival, we get the weather and NOTAM again, uh, click on the aircraft, any company NOTAMs, if there was an MEL for this aircraft, this will also be displayed. Uh, whether it's schedule or non schedule. In test mode, the system can use historical wins. We currently use the UK Met 10 year 50% wins. And you can also use your own win component and ISA. If you're flying for a different company and you want to use their call sign, you can uh, enter in their ICAO and their flight number, and that will appear on the ICAO flight. Drift down methods can be either escape routes, um, payload, or in auto, the system will work out the best. And the drift down engine can either be one engine out or half engine, depending what your company policy is. Weights, we can receive messages from low control system with a, a, a zero fuel weight or a payload. Uh, the payload can be entered in manually as an adult or children. Or you can add in males, females, children. Uh, the default weights can be changed on a per flight basis if required. So if we have 150. 10 children, uh, we put a payload in of 2,000 kilos. Uh, if the aircraft has different operating weights, the they will be displayed here with the default being selected. As I said, if the low control system has a zero fuel weight, we can have the zero fuel weight added. The max takeoff weight is displayed. Um, if you're operating to an airport where you are, are at a reduced takeoff weight, you can manually change this. And later this year, we have uh, plans to develop uh, a connection to uh, integrate our TODC, our uh, runway performance program in, so that by clicking the button here, it will go off and do a live calculation for the conditions of a, with preset parameters. And if there is a, a reduction in takeoff weight, this field will be automatically populated as with the landing weight. 
as this was a demo flight, we've already pre-populated the, um, the ETOPS from the database. So every time this flight is run, the ETOPS stations are filled in. You can also choose your own entry in ETOPS and uh, exit points if required. Comments to the crew and comments for field 18 are supported. With the ETPs, we support up to 12 ETP pairs and you can change the policy uh, for each ETP pair or use the uh, default setting. Crew names can come in directly from the uh, crewing system or manually added either from a, a database with a drop down menu or free hand type in. And if you need to change them, they can be deleted. With the, uh, the user login, there is a signed a signature. In this case, it's my name. And this will also appear on the flight plan automatically. If your operation supports reclear where you can reduce your contingency. Uh, this can be done by the system. By selecting the reclear destination, the system will calculate the best reclear point. And if you want to change it, by the drop down menu from the uh, waypoint list, you can select a waypoint of your choice. For the alternates, there is a alternate database specific to the company where the alternates are displayed in order of your preference. In automation mode, uh, when the system looks at the first alternate, if it is below limit, it will automatically choose the second one. If it's below that, it will choose the third one and so on. Uh, we support island hold and takeoff alternates if required. The EU Ops uh, en route alternate. The route to the alternate can be calculated automatically by the system by it will select a SID and star and join up by published routes. But there are occasions where you want to use a particular route to an alternate. So these can be built and stored to, for use. And I think we got to here. And also with the flight level, uh, if you want to fly at a specific flight level for the alternate, these can also be stored so that when the alternate is used, both that route number and flight level are used. The alternates are calculated in various manners. Uh, max alternate will look at the alternate and whichever one has the maximum burn, it will use that for the fuel block calculation. Uh, you can select the first or second alternate for the highest burn. The first order will just be regardless of what the burn is for the others. And we have a swatch where by selecting none, no alternate fuel is added to the fuel block, but you get a swatch with the alternates and the estimated fuel if wanted. So it's then up to the pilots to add the fuel on and make any other corrections. On this particular example, we have some stored company routes. So when we open up the flight, a quick mini flight plan is calculated based on the optimization and they are sorted in order. So based on today's wins for the time of flight, route 10 is the best. If I click on it, <coughs> the route is displayed. I get some graphics and some text of the route, number, the runway, the O-flight charges and the EU emission distance. The profile type can be set by named, in which case we can use cost index, uh, fixed MAC, uh, long range cruise, landing gear extended or any of the performance that the uh, Pro, uh, PEP Boeing Performance Program 
or aircraft manual can show. If we use cost index as the profile, provided the uh, direct operating cost database and the fuel price database are loaded by the customer, uh, the O-flight charges is loaded by NAVTEC and maintained by NAVTEC quarterly. The system will calculate a cost index for that particular flight. In addition, we have uh, MS cost index and MS fixed MAC. This is make schedule. So if you have a generous schedule or a tight schedule and you use the MS feature, the system will either speed up or slow down to try to make the schedule. We optimize on fuel cost or time. Uh, down the bottom here, you can just see an alerts come in for whether for some airports are being used on a flight plan. So once the flight plan's been calculated, any change, any weather that comes in that breaches certain limits will be displayed down the bottom there for the dispatcher to action. In addition, the max flight, flight level can be set on a per flight basis. The system has the max flight level based on performance or a particular route. But on the day, there may be an MEL that's just come up or operational requirement that wants the uh, flight plan to be at a different flight level so the, the maximum flight level can be set. We can also provide a one line summary uh, to compare fuel burns and time based on a different route, a different profile or a different flight level just to give the crew an idea that if they do not get their flight plan route the increase in fuel burn would be. The fuel is handled in a number of ways. Taxi fuel can be set by an amount or by a time. Um, if you're using the time feature, there is a taxi time database for each airport and aircraft type that set the taxi time based on the time of day. Additional fuel, this is fuel that would be added uh, for MELs and operational requirements that would be carried at the expense of payload. Tankering, we handle tankering in a number of ways. We have fixed, this is where you say I'd like two tons of fuel and the system providing none of the structural limits are broken will add on the two tons of fuel. Maximum is basically fill it up. Uh, we do have a safety guard that uh, will stop below the max structural limit. And again, providing the structural uh, takeoff limits or fuel capacity are not broken, it would be filled up to full tanks. Optimum table do a similar thing. They produce a table on the uh, navlog that shows what the fuel cost or saving would be at different percentage of tankering. The difference is with optimum, it will actually add that fuel in. If the aircraft's being fueled up for a different flight, uh, by selecting departure, you can enter the fuel on board the aircraft at the time, and the system will tell you whether is enough or too much and if you want to arrive with a particular amount of fuel by selecting arrival and type in the amount you would arrive with the system will do the calculation to carry the extra fuel to arrive with that amount of fuel plus it knows it's going to burn off extra fuel to arrive there so again it will subject to the limits carry the fuel For those aircraft that need ballast fuel, this can be entered here. We have two types of hold where you could add extra fuel for hold, either as a fuel amount or at a particular flight level for a certain amount of time. 
the minimum landing fuels come in automatically, but again, this can be increased. Company reserve policies, um, ETP bias. This is where extra fuel can be added for the ETP. Uh, circuit time can be controlled. MEL penalties. Uh, we have an MEL database that can be uh, integrated with maintenance systems. So a maintenance system can send us an MEL for an aircraft. And if there's a penalty associated with the MEL, this can be applied automatically to the flight plan calculation. For airports where there's no procedure, uh, IFR fuel at destination and alternate is a way of adding extra fuel in the burn in the descent to allow for uh, the approach into the airfield. Modified reserves are for uh, companies where they may have a different reserve policy for domestic and international. So when a flight goes from domestic to international, there will be a reserve policy why it's domestic and a different reserve policy for when it goes international. We have a fuel database in the background where the fuel prices are loaded. Uh, the fuel prices can be uploaded automatically from a, a text file. But if the flight hasn't got the fuel price loaded, uh, you can add the fuel price here uh, in the currency and the weight or volume of how it is billed. For flights that uh, require the APU running, uh, this button here will add the APU burn into the burn calculation. So from a dispatcher's point of view, if all the databases are loaded, when he opens the flight up, he just needs to check the aircraft registration the same, his payload, he's happy with the airports that have been selected for weather and NOTAMs, any crew wants to add, select the route, and compute. So this takes us into the report screen where the uh, computation is visible. We can view the, the light plan either as a text or a PDF. So here is the, uh, the flight plan that's come through. We've got the uh, basic flight information. Uh, the airports with the times and runways, the uh, route string, fuel block and weights, adjustment for increase in burn, the uh, one line summary for one level below and two level below, comments to the crew. ATC fight plan, uh, the nav log, which just zoom through quickly, uh, FIRs and things like that, ETP point, a summary for the uh, alternates, uh, the route to the alternate, or the primary route, I should say. Uh, all four alternates can have the route displayed if you want. The uh, drift down summary, in this case it's one engine out, depressurization, two engine operating, depressurization, and the one engine drift down. Validity window, uh, the before and after times can be customized. Wind summary. Any release statements you need, uh, crew names, dispatcher names, as I said, overflight charges, costs, fuel prices, um, the grid more escape route. Uh, at each waypoint, we calculate whether, if an engine was lost, whether the uh, route flight can be carried out uh, within the, the Mora. And for flights over high terrain, we calculate escape routes. So we calculate the route to the airport, any restricted areas that may affect the flight, 
Uh, there's the table for the tankering I told you about. Some details on the runway and schedule and some distances. So if the dispatcher or ops personnel is happy with the flight plan, we need to send it out. So the first thing we need to do if is in Europe is to check whether <coughs> excuse me, it would be accepted by Eurocontrol. So the IFPS validate button sends a message to Eurocontrol's test center through a B2B connection to see whether the route would be accepted. A green button tick says it should it should be okay. So we need to file it with air traffic. So this is the message it's going to go. I can see where it's going to go to. So these are the Euro control addresses. Uh, these are an AFTN address for the airline and an email code. But I can also type in. Uh, an email address if required. The flight can, plan can be sent now or at ETD minus a certain time or at a specific time. So you could run the flight plan in the morning for an afternoon departure and file it an hour or two hours before departure if that's the way you wanted to do it. But we'll do it now. So this won't go to air traffic, it'll just go to my email address. And again, I get the green tick to tell me it's been sent. To send out the flight package, which would consist of all the items ticked in the left hand column here, I can again use a short code that's come from a database. I can send it out as a text or PDF file. Again, we have the option of sending out now or at specific times. In addition, if this has already been sent out to the crew maybe a couple of hours earlier and the crew want an update, by ticking this box here, the system will just send out what's come in new since the last send. So you get a shorter message that just contains the updates. Again, we'll just send that. If the aircraft is ACARS equipped, we can send up the flight plan to the FMS, wind uplink, uh, free text messages. Uh, this is my SID address, so it's not going to go anywhere. Again, we've got a time when we can send it. And that will just send up the flight plan to the aircraft. If uh, permits are required, there is a permit database that uh, you can manage the permits by telling you what countries uh, require the permits for the flight and if you've got the permit. Uh, the permit can also be displayed on the flight plan and on the ICAO. And for those companies that are using uh, GPS navigation, we do a rain validate just to make sure the satellites are in contact. In addition to the ATC send, if there is a change to the route of the aircraft, we can send a change message. If the flight is running late, there's a preset delay message you can send. And if you have to cancel the flight, there is a preset cancel flight message. As you can see, certain of the text is bold. So again, this can be customized to highlight certain important items in the flight plan. And with the weather and no terms, again, we have color coding that can be used if required. We said that uh, in the example there were stored routes. 
But if there is no stored root and you had to build a root, we can select a departure either by max headwind, i.e. the system will look at the forecast time of departure and determine which runway is most likely to be in use given the, the maximum headwind. There are other options of using a particular runway or longest procedure. So with the longest procedure, it'll just look whichever the longest procedure out of the airport is. You can select specific runway, particular SIDs. But we'll just stick with the max headwind for this example. The MTTA is minimum time track airway, so it will look for airways between the two points. But I could say to the system, I'd like to go via a certain waypoint along a certain airway, uh, direct to a lap long, direct to another waypoint. So the route can be customized. So just for example, on this one, if I want to say to the system, I'd rather depart via a waypoint called Berry Head. So as I said, routes can be uh, created and stored. Up to 99 routes per city pair can be stored and can be self-maintained by storing them for a particular time so that they can be deleted, which helps with the, the database. What we were just about going on to was the automation mode. This flight was set up for automation. So at minus two hours before departure, uh, it ran a very quick flight plan. There's a green tick there to say it worked. If for any reason it failed, there'd be a red cross there. I would have got a warning and on the uh, list screen, I'd see uh, a red uh, back panel. Uh, at minus one hour 50, we reran the flight plan again and saved the data to be used again. We could have a f action there to send flight plan to air traffic. And on this particular one, we've had at minus one hour 45, send the flight plan out to um, Maybe the Handley agent or the crew room uh, would be a, a pre-stored address. Here, we've seen there has been a failure. And if I click on it, it, it tells me what went wrong. So for this particular one, there was no aircraft stored. So uh, I would have got a warning when it was supposed to be actioned to say there's an aircraft missing, I could uh, add the aircraft and then uh, set the uh, flight back into automation. We're running out of time, so hopefully you've got a good idea of what the system can do. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please enter them in the box at the bottom and I'll try to answer a few. And if not, I will do my best to answer all the ones that have been submitted. Thank you. We've had one question of how can the system avoid the restricted areas? Um, in the database, we have the coordinates of the area and the height of the restriction. So in a three dimensional map, we know where the restriction is and the algorithm works around it. So it blocks off the airways or the uh, that particular area so when we do the MTTA, it knows not to go through that area. Another question was, can we check the validity of routes stored in the database against upcoming air rat cycles? Yes, for in-house systems, we are able to uh, provide a, what we call a passive and active database. So uh, three or four days before the air rack date, uh, we load the air rack onto the uh, passive side we copy the route database across, and then the customer can validate those routes, build new routes under the new ARAC. And then at ARAC time, we uh, copy the uh, passive database into the live system. 
Uh, there's another one. Can the map be split off into a separate screen or resized not to fall? Uh, resized not to fall, no. It's either the small or the, the large. Um, the story here is in one of our previous systems, we did have a number of screens. Uh, one of the comments from the customer we had at the time were there was too many screens. So in the latest version, we've tried to cut down on the screens. And almost immediately after we release this, people are saying we like the map in a separate screen. So yes, that is being in the development and should be out later this year. We have another question of how to avoid countries along the route. Uh, in the uh, route buildings uh, screen, there is a must not use box where you can enter in must not use a country, must not use an FIR, a waypoint or an airway. Yes, the uh, question here is, would it be possible to print out a weather chart from the system? Yes, the, the weather charts can be included in the flight package uh, given to the crew or printed by the dispatcher or op staff as required. Another question is, is the list showing only the flight plans which are filed or for all the aircraft you created? The list screen shows all the flights that are planned to operate inside that window. So as I showed in the filter, the window is minus six hours to plus 12. So whether the flight plans have been computed, uh, filed, uh, not any action taken against or even cancelled, they are displayed in the list screen. And then with the status icons, you can monitor the state of the flight. But you can also filter on those icons. So if you just wanted to see flights that have been computed or not computed, you can. So before releases, uh, our release notes sent out, yes. Uh, we plan to send out the release notes uh, about a month before the release. Uh, so that will be the first notification. The, the new release is then put on the beta system where the customers can check it. And then on release day, we, before we go ahead for the in-house systems, we just check with the customer to make sure a, a suitable time is agreed. So we, we, we don't do the uh, release at a peak time. And I think we'll make this the final question. Does the system have the functionality for runway performance analysis for takeoff, landing, contamination? The answer is yes, we do this at the moment with another third party company. But we will be doing this integration with our own runway performance program later on this year. And the way this would work is that you go into a separate calculation where it will run uh, a single point calculation with the contamination or the, the runway state. And then it will update the, the flight plan, max takeoff, max landing weight, and produce a swatch to go on the flight plan. So you have my email address there. If you have any questions, please send them to me. I will respond to the questions that have come through on the uh, webinar today. And thank you for your time. Thanks. Goodbye.